end of the day, I'm so grateful to God that he surrounded our church with good people who love the Lord and are willing to live selflessly and then watch God continue just to move them forward. You know, I, I want to, for the sake of time, jump right into this that God has given me, this message that God has given me for the new year. Psalm 138. We're going to read Psalm 138, and we're going to get down in here. Psalm 138, we're going to read the whole psalm. And this psalm is, is a psalm that David wrote as he was expressing the Lord's goodness to people that are faithful. And God responds to people that are faithful. He says here in verse 1, I will praise you with my whole heart before the gods, little g. He says, I will sing praise to you. I will worship toward your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth. He says, for you have magnified your word ab above all your names. Psalm 138. He says, in the day when I cried out, he says, you answered me and made me bold with strength in my soul. He says, all the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, when they hear the words of your mouth. Yes, they shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord is on high, yet he regards the lowly, but the proud he knows from afar. Now watch this, y'all, verses 7 and 8. He says, though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. You will stretch out your hand uh, against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand will save me. And then he makes this statement. He says, the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the works of your hands. He says, the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. 2021, for us as a church, is the year of perfection. Oftentimes when we look at our lives, we fail to realize the complexity of our lives. Our lives are really complex. There's so many things that go on in our lives. Domestically, financially, Health from a health standpoint, raising children, mentally, spiritually, vocationally. At any given time, our life has so many things going on all at once. And one of the things that happens is, saints, is we have to realize that, that in all these various areas, God is, he's working, he's perfecting us. He's perfecting us in areas. But the church has done a bad job of looking at this particular word, perfection or perfect, we start to look at it as a bad word, as it's something that is not attainable, something that cannot be accomplished in our life, and something that, that you know, how can you say that, brother? And one of the things that we have to do is get back into the language that God uses. We want to use biblical terms because if God uses this biblical term, I want to understand this term because I want God to work that in my life. As he's working on all these various areas in my life, at any given time, I could be doing good in this area, but then also doing not so well in this area. And there's areas in my life where I'm blossoming and I'm blooming, but then there's areas in my life that seem kind of dead. And so when we're living through our lives, sometimes we have all this going on and we don't realize that there's areas in your life that God is perfecting. He desires to perfect and he wants to bring us to that place in our lives where when we start to use the word perfection, we start to uh, direct it towards us towards my personal life. And so David, here David is, he's here in the midst of thinking of God's goodness, being blessed by God, and then he stops in verse eight and he says, the Lord will perfect 
that which concerns me. He's talking about his whole life and the various aspects of his life. He's talking about the kingdom. He's talking about everything that pertains to David. He's saying, the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. He says it. He doesn't say, well, you know, nothing is perfect. I can never be perfect. My life will never be perfect. He says, no, no, no. He says, the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Now, this word here in the Hebrew, it's, it's, it's obviously tied to the word to, to a, the, the same word that we're going to see in the, New, in the New Testament. So we see in Hebrew, this particular Hebrew word is great. It means to complete. Perfect means to complete. The root of the idea of the word is to end a thing, is to end it. But when you go to the Greek, the word that's tied to this particular word in the Greek is teleos. And you see this many times in the Bible, in the Old Testament and in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the New Testament. You see this in the New Testament a lot because the Apostle Paul uses the word. Peter uses the word. Jesus uses the word. We're going to go over this in a, in a minute here. But the word teleos in the, in the Greek, it means to finish. It means to complete. It means to finish that which has uh, reached its end. It means to be full grown. It means to be full of age. It means one who has attained moral maturity. It means to grow up. It means to come to an end. It means to complete. It means to fulfill. And so there's, my life has all these complex aspects to it. We have to see that when it comes to your life, there are things in your life that God wants to put an end to. He wants, to fill, he wants to fulfill it. He wants you to grow up. He wants you to come of age in this area. He wants to complete it. He wants to bring it to an end so that that aspect of your life, it's not a matter of, well, you know, I, nobody is perfect. Now our language begins to change and we start to believe that God can perfect me in this area. He can perfect me in this particular area. I want to use biblical language. God said he can perfect me in this. He can perfect me in my thought life. He can perfect me. And the, this is the problem, saints. If we don't believe God can do it, we're going to hinder him from doing it in our lives. So our language has to change. He says he will perfect that which concerns me. So as in all this complexity, there's areas of my life, God, I want you to perfect. Perfect me in my thinking. Perfect me in my, in my, on my vocation. I want to be in the perfect job. When it comes to doing these things spiritually, when it comes to my vocation, when it comes to children and health and finances and domestic issues and, and all the things that pertain to life, God, I want you to bring this to a place of closure and end. So in this area, this area, I'm not stressing and worrying about this area no more or anymore because, God, you perfected that. You perfected that in my life. And so when we think about this, we want to go to Matthew chapter 5. Because Matthew chapter 5 gives us a glimpse into how Jesus thought when it came to perfection. Or being perfect, complete, coming to an end in an area, finishing, becoming full grown, full of age, or attaining moral maturity. It says here in verse 43 of Matthew chapter 5. He says, you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use and persecute you. That you may be sons of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good. And sends rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brother only, what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so? 
He says here, therefore you shall be perfect just as your father in heaven is what? Is perfect. Amazing that he would say this. Sometimes we read these verses and we just skip over them as if he, how can he say that? What does he mean by that? Perfect. Nobody is perfect. Nobody is perfect and nothing is perfect. Nobody is perfect, but we have to go back to this fact that God is perfecting that which concerns me. We have to get back in the mold that, yes, nobody is perfect. We're all workmanship of God. But I believe in the perfecter to perfect me. And this is where we miss it. In my personal life, I want the perfecter to perfect me. In my local church, I want the perfecter to perfect us. I want to come to that place of fullness, of maturity, and a full age and come to an age an end so that we're not constantly struggling with and striving with the same thing because God has shut that down. He's brought an end to that because the perfecter has perfected that which concerns me. He has perfected that which concerns me. And so as a result of this, when you, we look at this, Jesus uses this term and he doesn't use it by mistake. He's using it on purpose. Can God stretch us to a place where we will believe God for more than we believed him for in 2020? Can he stretch us to a place in our mindset that when it comes to my, to my life, to your life, to this ministry and everything that pertains to us, that God can take us to a new place, another realm in the spirit and that he can perfect that which concerns us. Can we believe God for that or we will allow ourselves to be pigeonholed by our own unbelief and doubt? God can't fix this in my life. He can't fix my finances. I'm just hanging on. He can't fix my health. I can't get my health together. I can't, I can't, I can't. He can't, he can't fix it. He, and, but I love God. I love God. God is good. God is good. But, but, but can he perfect that which concerns you? Can he bring it to a place of fullness, of completion? That when you look and you say to yourself, man, God really did that in my life. He's perfected that which concerns me. Jesus is helping them to see that if you're going to say that you believe in the Father or that you say that he, God is your Father, then you have to allow him to perfect you. He says here, therefore you shall be perfect just as your Father in heaven is perfect. You shall come to a place of completeness you shall come to a place where God brings forth moral maturity into your life. The, you become full of growth and you become to a place in your life where you're not just struggling with the same thing, but God is perfecting that which concerns you. He's brought completion to it. You look at that area and say, man, I, I still got to watch out. I'm still growing. But man, the devil can't get me with that anymore. <laughs> He can't get me with that. He can't. He can't. I got, I'm, God done, he done brought me to a place now. I'm not the same old. I'm not a baby in Christ anymore. I done grown up in some things. Now I'm smarter and wiser. And so when we think about this, saints, we have to think of this in threefold. Number one, with us personally, okay, God will perfect that which concerns you, you as a person. Not just the other aspects of your life, but you as a human being, God will perfect that which concerns you. Go to Colossians chapter 1, and we're going to look at verse 24 on down to 29. As your pastor, one of the things that God is challenging me with, with this particular message, is, is challenging me to make sure that, and then I talk to you guys about this a lot, but to make sure that we stay on point, regardless of what goes on in the culture. This year, and I was just sharing this with several people, in my opinion, this year has been devastating for the church at large. In my opinion, the church failed miserably during this year. 
And we failed, we failed because from a, from, a, from a pandemic standpoint, I believe that there was a response from the church that was not what God is looking for. And there should be more valiant warriors that step up to the cause. God has our back. And Jesus died for us. And there has to be something in us that has a little bit more bite in us than just bark. And when pressure comes, how do we respond? I believe that the church at large has not responded the right way. And we've got to get our, we got to get our bearings back. And that means making sure from a messaging standpoint that we get back to the points that, that help us to become perfect or become perfected in God. We fell miserably with the political aspect. This year, I, 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 got to, I stood up on this pulpit and I told you I was shocked and amazed how the church responded during this time politically. To me, it was embarrassing. To see certain Christians get so wrapped up in the politics as if these politicians are Jesus. They're not the king. I'm thankful that my mom didn't raise me up and wrap me up in up politics and stuff. I'm not into all that stuff. I know enough as a pastor just so I can get a feeling of what's going on. But I stay away from my wife. I stay away from that stuff. I, I don't know, man. You know, and but but the thing about it is, is this to watch the church respond, the division, the hatred, the vitriol towards the politicians and towards each other. It's not right in the sight of God. It's not right. People can say, well, brother, you got to be up to date. You got to be current. No, I read my Bible and that keeps me right on the pulse and keeps me following the finger of God. And I'll read my Bible more than I listen to CNN and Fox. You better ask somebody. And so what happens is we have to stay on message if God is going to perfect us. Watch this. Look at verse 24 on down to 24. Now I, he says, Colossians chapter 1, verse 24 on down to 29. He says, I now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up in my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ for the sake of his body, which is his church, of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God, which was given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. The mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints, to them, to the saints, God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this ministry among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. He says, now watch this, y'all. He says, him we preach, warning every man, and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man what, y'all? Perfect in Christ Jesus. To this end, I also labor, striving according to his working, which works in me mightily. So the God is perfecting you. And he's going to do it through preaching that pertains to him. Paul says, him we preach. He didn't say politics we preach. He didn't say denomination we preach. He didn't say this we preach or that. He says him we preach. And when we begin to find out who Jesus is, we'll begin to reflect him in the earth. And that is what is necessary for the perfecting. Is that we have that you are changed into the image that you're constantly beholding. We want to behold him. We want to preach him. We want to talk about him, his glory. We want to talk about those things that pertain to him. And as we talk about him, then we start to be changed into his image from glory to glory. God starts to perfect us. But the problem is, is we're consumed with all this other information. And we get so consumed that we don't allow the image of him to be before us so that we're constantly changed into his image from glory to glory. I want to preach him. We preach him. We want to hear about him. 
We want to sing about him. We want to rejoice in him. Can I have an amen, y'all? We want him. We want to get to know him. We want to slow our lives down and just get to know him more. But I love the apostle Paul. He says, him we preach. This helps to be, cause people to become perfected in him. He will perfect that which concerns me. People are perfected by allowing the preaching of him to be released and receiving that. He says, him we preach. And then he says, warning every man. Warning every man. The gospel and the message of Christ also comes with a warning. And it should. If God is trying to perfect us, he's going to give us warnings along the way. Paul wasn't afraid to give warning. Hey, if you do that, this is what's going to happen. You got to be careful about that. You got to be watchful about that. And the problem that we have is that people think warning is a bad thing when it's actually an expression of God's grace towards us to help us not to go down the wrong path. <laughs> I love warnings. God says, hey, don't do that. Oh, oh my bad. So we need warnings in life. But the gospel, the message that comes across the pulpit has to come with warning because we're trying to perfect people. And so Paul says, he says, him we preach. He says, warning every man and teaching every man. We need teaching. We need teaching. We need sound biblical doctrine that comes from the throne of God that helps us to position ourselves in a position where God, the perfecter, can continue to perfect us. Well, he does it by using the tool of his word. And as we go into 2021, we have to understand, I need to hear him. I need to hear about him. I need some warnings in my life. God, send warning. I want all the warnings that I need to make sure I stay on the path. And I want sound teaching. I want teaching that comes from your throne. I'm not just going to eat everything this year. We sat there, people have sat there and watched the newscasters and just ate everything they said. Then a spirit of fear comes on the people. Then people fall away and people get caught up. And the next thing you know, you just watch people. And I say, man, people have to get back to hearing the teaching that comes from the throne that is inspired by the Holy Spirit. We need that message to, so people can be perfected. He says, teaching every man. And he says this, the Apostle Paul says this. He says, in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ to this end also, he says, he says, I also labor striving according to the working which works in me mightily. There's a power that's working in me mightily, but in this I'm also laboring and striving because I understand that it's gonna take this to see people come to a place of maturity or completion or end in various aspects of their life. There's aspects of their lives where it's time for that season to be over. That I've grown beyond that. There's areas of our lives, and God is saying, I want to perfect that which concerns you. I want to do that in 2021, but you have to understand that for, you, for us to do it, it's also going to take a ministry that's willing to strive and labor according to the working of his power that works in us mightily. We cannot be lazy this year we cannot be slothful this year people are dying and they are going to hell and it's our job as a church community to have people that are willing to labor and to strive according to the power that's working in them to help to see souls saved people are dying and we can sing our songs, it's a beautiful thing, but we also have to sing our songs and then couple that with God help me to get out here and work to see somebody give their life to Jesus. And in 2021, we have to realize that that's part of the perfecting uh, aspect of ministry. So this is what God is doing in us. But we also have to understand that he's also doing things for us. Romans chapter 20, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2.
God is working to perfect that which concerns me, me personally, but then also those other areas and aspects of my life that pertain to my life. He says in Romans chapter 12, verse one and two, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as living sac- a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. He says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove or discern what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, I I have this here because what happens is is this, saints. The, the, The perfect will of God is where we want to sit in our lives because everything that you need that pertains to your life is tied to you being in the will of God. I can't expect God to bless me, prosper me, and do those things from an external aspect of my life that pertain to my life and perfect those things if I'm constantly out of God's will in my life, striving to do my own thing and striving to do what I want to do. There's no grace tied to your plans. All the grace is tied to his plans. And when you get yourself aligned with the perfect will of God, then now all the blessings that are, that are necessary for you to have success, you begin to just run into them. And this is what we need. We need to get back to a place where we're constantly aligning ourselves with God's perfect will. God, help me to find your perfect will in my life. I want to be right in the center of your will. Every bit of provision and strength that you need is tied to that place. It's tied to that place. You see God, you find yourself running into God's blessing when you know you're just in the center of God's will. You don't, and then, and then the blessings come and there's not a striving associated with the blessings. They just start taking you over when you know you're in the will of God. But when we're in a position where we're just trying to chase after our dream, after our want, after our desire, after what we think is cool, or after what the culture says is cool, then we're not, God's not obligated to supply our need in that moment. But anything that he's called you to, he pays for it. (laughs) My goodness. So if he, if I know I'm in the will of God, now I, I, my expectation is, well, God's going to make sure that he supplies the need because he's the one who called me to do this. Can I have an Amen. And so what happens is we have to align ourselves with God, realizing in 2021, God is going to perfect that which concerns us, but we want to make sure that we're in the perfect will of God. God, help me to align myself with your will. I can't just keep going down these paths and then I want to be in the center, God. And then help me order my steps. Help me to be right where you want me to be when I'm supposed to be there so that, God, your blessing just overtakes me. And so when he's perfecting that which concerns me, he's perfecting me, but then all my circumstances and situations, perfection comes as a result of me being in his perfect will. And then the last area that I want to address tonight is the church. You're a part of vision. You're a part of vision. You're a part of God's purpose in the earth that he shared with me, that I share with the elders and share with the congregation. And so when it comes to us, we have to see as a church community, God is perfecting his church. Remember, Jesus is coming back for a bride that is without spot and without wrinkle. He says, without spot and without wrinkle. He's coming back for a people, for a bride that has made herself ready. And so what's happened is, is we've confused the the church that Jesus is building with the church that the devil is erecting and the false church and the the church that is riding on the beast, the Bible says in the book of uh, Revelation 17. We have to get ourselves out of that and get ourselves aligned with the true church of God and realize that God's trying to do something special with us and it involves perfecting us. Go to Ephesians chapter four and we're gonna look at verse seven on down. It 
It says here in verse 7. He says, but to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Now this he ascended, what does it mean but that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. And he himself gave some to be apostles, gave some to be prophets, some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. He says, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That's the goal. That's the goal. The goal isn't just to have a big church. The goal isn't to have fancy buildings and, and smokes machines and instruments and all those things are good. We appreciate those things. But the goal for Christianity is us to grow up and to become complete in Christ. He said to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ that we start looking like Jesus. That when people think about you, they think about Jesus. That when they think about our church, they say, Jesus is in there. Jesus is with them. Jesus Christ is there. He's healing people, delivering people, setting people free. He's perfecting people, getting them off drugs. He's changing people's minds. He's delivering people. Jesus is with those people. And they're beginning to act like Jesus. And Jesus is in their midst. And that Jesus is walking with them and talking with them. That when they get up in the morning, Jesus is there. When they go to bed, he's hovering over them. That his presence is in them. That Jesus is walking. There's something that has to transpire when our minds, when we stop thinking that our success is in stuff and realize our success is in him. Him. In him. And so the Apostle Paul, he says it here very clearly. He says in verse 13, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. Every wind of doctrine that comes, people just eat it up. And they get tossed here and there. You say, Whatever happened to such and such? Oh man, he started believing this bad doctrine. He eating this bad doctrine, man. He got caught up with this one and caught up with that one, and he was listening to that one. And he, man, he just, the wind of doctrine. It's a sign of a lack of maturity. And so the Apostle Paul, he says it. And it's important for us to realize that this is something that we have to fight. He says that we should no longer be children, verse 14, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, he says, Christ from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effect of working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Saints, we have to realize that this is part of the mandate as a church is to help to bring forth perfection and to bring forth the, the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ within people, within the local church. The various aspects of Christ, the various ministries of Christ, the expressions of Christ, that when people come, they see the expression of Christ within the local church because the church is being perfected. And God raises up apostles, and he raises up prophets, and he raises up evangelists and pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, that we might all come into the unity of the face and to the stature of the fullness of Christ. 
to a perfect man, to the stature of the fullness, of, so that we begin to mature into that. But we're so busy trying to find out all this other stuff that we're majoring on the minors. And we got to get back to majoring on the major, which is, I want to be like Jesus. Yes, I can sing, but I want to be like Jesus. Yes, I can play instruments, I want to be like Jesus. Yes, I can preach, I want to be like Jesus. Yes, I can prophesy, I want to be like Jesus. Though. Yes, I can sing, I can do all these things, but my goal in life is to become more like him. And what we have to do is realize that as we're going into 2021, the Lord says that in this hour that I will begin to do things that it will shock you and I will amaze you and I will begin to transform you. And the Lord says that I will stretch you even as I will stretch this church and I will cause the church to come to a place where growth pains begin to spring forth. But it's a good thing, the Lord says. Because you are growing and you are stretching and I will begin to perfect you in a way in which will amaze you. And the Lord says that even in this hour, I will begin to raise up prophets. I will begin to raise up the apostolic. I will begin to revisit this aspect of the ministry. And I will begin to perfect that which concerns you in this area. And there will be a perfecting that takes place within the people's hearts. And the Lord says that I will draw them and I will not draw them just from near. The Lord says, I will draw them from afar. And even as I begin to draw them, the words that come from my throne will proceed to spew forth from you and from this church community. And the Lord says that even as there has been a drought of the hearing of the words of God, the Lord says that I will bring forth a refreshing and a desire for refreshing in this hour. And the Lord says that there will be a training and an equipping. And the Lord says that I will jettison the training and equipping because the days, the days that are ahead will be troubling, says the Lord. The Lord said that I will sh continue to shake things. And the Lord says that there will be a tremor, but there will be a settling in you. But the Lord says that even as I settle you, that I will begin to stretch you because the Lord says in this hour, I will bring forth a perfection in areas of your life that you never thought that I could perfect. The Lord says, believe me for perfection. Understand that which I'm doing in you is for perfection. And the Lord says that even as I'm perfecting you, the Lord says, wait on me. The Lord says, you are not building you, I am building you. And I am perfecting you in this hour. And the Lord says that even as I perfect this ministry, the Lord says that I will cause the ministry to remain settled even as I have established it in this region. Lord, we thank you tonight. And we play, praise you tonight for that which you are doing. Last year you told us that it was the year of foundation. Little did we ever know that all this was going to test our foundation. But here we are, Lord, going into 2021, I thank you that this is the year of perfection. Perfect that which concerns your people. Perfect that which concerns this ministry and perfect that which concerns people's lives, Lord. God, bring forth the abundance and the blessing that you plan to bring forth even as there is a trembling that will take place. Lord, we thank you tonight. We give you glory. And Lord, I pray, perfect us. I cry, perfect us. Lord, perfect that which concerns us. Lord, areas in our lives where we never thought we could be stretched to this level of blessing. Lord, stretch your people and perfect that which concerns them. Lord, areas in people's lives where they thought that, Pastor, I just keep struggling at this same spot. Lord, perfect that which concerns them. Cause them to move beyond it to complete, to finish, to Lord, to end their personal lives, that they would come to an end, that they would grow, become full, 
and that moral maturity would just begin to spring forth. Bring forth this in their lives. Lord, there's so many different various aspects of our lives that you're, you're working on. But there are areas, Lord, you're going to perfect this year. Bring it to completion. Finish it, Lord. In us and through us and for this church, God, we just give you glory today. And we honor you for 2021, the year of perfection. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, worship team. Come on, let's bring in. We got about three minutes. Let's bring in the new year shouting our praises and glorifying the Most High God. What song y'all got? Oh, I, I know that one. I know that one. What you gonna sing? Come on, y'all. We got three minutes. Let's do it. Antonio, we need some shirts. We need some shirts that say perfection. Come on, brother. Come on, y'all.
Thank you for joining us for Times of Refreshing. This program is a production of the Well Christian Community. You can learn more about our church and the various ministries we offer by visiting us on the web at www.thewellchurch.net or by calling our office at 925-479-1414. Or if you're looking for a church home or visiting the Livermore area, we would love for you to come by and visit us. Our service times are Sunday, 10.30 a.m. We are located at 2333 Nissan Drive in Livermore, California, 94551. For direction to our church, call us at 925-479-1414. Until next time, may Jesus Christ be highly exalted in your life, and may His Word bring you a peace that transcends all understanding.